Hi biologists, let's start by looking at the learning objectives for this lesson. At the end of this section and following the biology syllabus, you should be able to define an enzyme and refer to the protein nature and folded shape of enzymes. Understand the role of enzymes in plants and animals, making special reference to their role in metabolism. No amylase, pepsin or catalase as examples of enzymes involved in chemical breakdown. No other enzymes such as potato phosphorylase as examples of enzymes involved in synthesis. What does this actually mean? What are we trying to understand? It's straightforward enough. You have to know the definition of an enzyme and refer to the protein nature and folded shape of enzymes. You have to understand the role or the function of enzymes in plants and animals, making special reference to their role or their function in metabolism. You have to know amylase, pepsin or catalase as examples of enzymes involved in chemical breakdown or catabolism. You have to know other enzymes such as potato phosphorylase as examples of enzymes involved in synthesis or anabolism. Let's sort out enzymes by first looking at the definition of an enzyme. Now an enzyme is a biological catalyst made of protein with a 3D folded shape. This has to be learned off by heart, word perfect, exactly as it is here. The exams are very fond of asking the definition of an enzyme and it is one of the objectives of this section. Now, a catalyst speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction without being used up itself. So enzymes speed up chemical reactions. They are biological because they are found in cells. They are made of protein and they have a three-dimensional folded shape. What do we mean by 3D? You might be familiar with 3D in the cinema. When you go to the normal cinema, the screen is flat. When you go to a 3D cinema and wear the special glasses, you get a different effect. It's rather like the difference between a fried egg in a frying pan, which is as flat as a pancake, and a normal egg before you crack it open, sitting in a carton. A normal egg has a 3D, bulky, football type shape. So it's the same thing with enzymes. They have a 3D folded, bulky type shape. Each one of these key points have to be included when you are giving a definition of an enzyme. Don't forget the vital point that the chemical reactions of metabolism or all the chemical reactions in a cell, they're all catalyzed, generally speeded up by enzymes. Now before we look at the protein nature and the structure of enzymes, let's revise and recall what we know about proteins already. The basic elements, the basic chemicals of the periodic table present in proteins are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen for definite. This is what characterizes proteins. Sometimes sulfur might be present. Just like letters join to form units called words, these elements join to form subunits called amino acids. The smallest unit, therefore, of a protein is an amino acid. What's interesting, and what we learned already, is that there are 20 common and several rare amino acids in proteins. The bond between the amino acids is a peptide bond. A protein is made of at least 200 amino acids. And these amino acids or proteins are folded to take up a 3D shape, a bulky shape. Now, let's have a look at the protein nature and folded shape of proteins. 
Look how the information links back into food. Enzymes are made of protein. Those of you able for a little bit more, all enzymes are made of protein. But not all proteins are enzymes. Proteins feature as parts of the structure of the body, perhaps. Enzymes contain the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and nitrogen. Again, the same material. Enzymes are proteins, so are therefore made from amino acids. Proteins are made by the ribosomes in the cell. Link this back to the idea of protein synthesis. When you think about it, the function of ribosomes is to make protein. And sure, if proteins are enzymes, then enzymes are made during protein synthesis, which takes place in the ribosomes. The amino acid chains are folded into a three dimensional, a 3D globular bulky shape. This is a vital characteristic of enzymes and vital to how they work. So globular shapes are vital for proper functioning. And don't forget, different enzymes have different shapes. What is the role of enzymes in plants and animals? We can't stress it enough. Enzymes control the chemical reactions in plants and animals. Most chemical reactions take place in a number of steps, which need to be carefully controlled if the cell is to function properly. The enzymes are the most important controllers of these cellular reactions. So the role of enzymes can be seen clearly when we look at the chemical reactions involved in respiration. In respiration, the enzymes mediate or they control the release of energy. In photosynthesis, don't forget this only occurs in plants, the enzymes are essential in the energy transfer processes that go on in photosynthesis. Every chemical reaction, as we've just said, that occurs in a living thing is controlled by an enzyme. Therefore, enzymes, we can't stress it highly enough, control metabolism. Both catabolic breakdown reactions like respiration and anabolic reactions, synthesis reactions like photosynthesis, are controlled by enzymes. Enzymes involved in chemical breakdown would be catalase, pepsin, amylase. Let's have a look at these a little bit more closely. Catalase is found in every living cell of the body. The function of catalase is to break down hydrogen peroxide, those are able for a bit more, the formula being H2O2, into water, H2O, and oxygen gas. It's very important to remember the function of catalase. Pepsin is another enzyme found in the stomach. It is found in the gastric juice produced by the stomach. Pepsin breaks down proteins to peptides, all the P's. P for pepsin, P for protein, P for peptides. Lastly, amylase. Amylase is found in your saliva, where it can be called salivary amylase. It is found in the pancreatic juice that your pancreas makes and it is called pancreatic amylase. Again, amylase breaks down starch, a complex polysaccharide, to maltose, which is a disaccharide or a simple sugar. Take note, these three enzymes are involved in chemical breakdown. So these three enzymes are involved in 
catabolism. Remember, C for catabolism, CC, complicated chemicals are changed into simple chemicals by catabolic enzymes. Catabolism involves the use of enzymes with the release of energy. What are the enzymes involved in synthesis or building up reactions? Well, the anabolic enzymes, anabolism, is the taking of simple chemicals and making complicated chemicals, using enzymes and requiring energy. So the three anabolic enzymes are potato phosphorylase. Now this one is particularly mentioned on the syllabus, so make it your business to know it. DNA polymerase and DNA ligase or ligase, whichever way you want to pronounce it. Potato phosphorylase is found in potato plant stem cells. This enzyme is found in the humble spud cells. Spuds are actually stems belonging to the potato plant. Potato phosphorylase will form starch, so we're going to make a complicated chemical from a simpler chemical called glucose. Think about it. Of course the spud has to be involved in chemical reactions where glucose is converted into starch because starch is a storage carbohydrate in plants and spuds or stem cells are full of starch in the potato. DNA polymerase. A polymer is a long chain. It's a complicated chemical. You might have come across polymers in chemistry. So keep it in mind that DNA polymerase is an enzyme involved in synthesis. It's going to be involved in making a long chain because it is an anabolic enzyme. So the long chain that's going to be made obviously has to be a DNA. So this enzyme, this anabolic enzyme is found in every living cell and as we have just said forms DNA from nucleotides. Probably should be a little s on there. DNA ligase. Well this is used in genetic engineering. L-I-G means to tie things together. You would have ligature marks on your wrists if you were kidnapped because you were tied up. Ligaments attach bones to bones. They tie them together. So lig refers to tying. So here we'll keep this in mind because we're going to be tying bits of DNA together. So DNA ligase is used in genetic engineering where you're going to join two pieces of DNA together. So there you have it. Now that we've reached the end of our lesson, have we achieved our objective? Can you define an enzyme and refer to the protein nature and folded shape of enzymes? Can you understand the role of enzymes in plants and animals, making special reference to their role in metabolism? Do you know amylase, pepsin and catalase as examples of enzymes involved in chemical breakdown? Do you know other enzymes such as potato phosphorylase as examples of enzymes involved in synthesis?